Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Bailey. Usual information is below. Uh, today I want to talk about Julia Schramm. I think, uh, yeah, we all knew this one was coming uh, yesterday when I didn't cover it. It's kind of weird. I talk like a pirate day. I don't talk about a pirate. Today I'm talking about a pirate party member. My logic, don't try to understand it. But anyways, the point here is Julia Schramm is, and I guess soon will be a was, a executive board member of the German Pirate Party. The German Pirate Party actually being one of the more successful ones internationally because they've done a pretty good job in broadening their platform to cover things like um, government transparency and so forth and a bid to sort of do better in the local elections and hopefully sort of build on those and gain steam in the national ones. However, she's found herself in something of a pickle because basically she recently published a book entitled Click Me and apparently there's a pretty difficult translation issue with the full title but we'll get into that we won't get into that um, but what's interesting about it is she sold the book to a subsidiary of Random House and Random House apparently has been fairly aggressive in enforcing the copyright of this work including getting it taken down from several file sharing sites including a Dropbox version of it and this is from an executive board member of a party whose tentpole position is the legalization of non-commercial file sharing. Uh, obviously her colleagues aren't very happy about this. A lot of the pro-copyright groups have been having a field day with it. And the word hypocrite has been thrown around so much I'm tempted to build a drinking game around it. Just because uh, it would be a great way to get schnockered really, really fast. Um, but yes, it's definitely an interesting ethical position. Uh, this, to be clear, is a woman who said that intellectual property was quote-unquote disgusting and who said that uh, publishers and uh, related large content organizations are part of the quote-unquote content mafia. And her defense so far pretty much has been, I guess I should have negotiated parts of my contract better. And to be clear, Lawrence Lessig um, and a lot of other pro-piracy and pro-copyright reform guys have published books and have negotiated to have them released under a Creative Commons license and they've done very well with those books so it's not like this is an impossible feat <clears throat> but something that may have had a hand in this was that SRAM was given a 100,000 euro about a $130,000 advance on the book long story short um, this has led to accusations that she got money and basically threw her ideals clean out the window. And I'm not saying that is or that is not true, but I can certainly understand how it seems that way. And a lot of people are having a lot of fun with us um, at her expense. Now, this isn't the only hypocrisy I have observed in this. Um, I mean, just in the news alone, we've had uh, Vivo was illegally streaming NFL games at a conference. Um, we've had uh, Brain, the Dutch anti-piracy organization, was famously um, not paying the proper royalties to the guy that wrote the music in their big anti-piracy, you know, that you wouldn't download a car, that ad. Um, so yeah, it's not the only hypocrisy, but this one strikes me as a little different. Um, because with those, they're large organizations with lots of subcontracts and lots of hands in the pot. And the mistakes and the problems and the hypocrisy feel will probably happen lower down. It wasn't the people making the policy decisions at Brain that didn't pay that musician. This was a decision, you know, and it wasn't the higher ups at Vivo and the people connected with the record labels that weren't, you know, that made the decision to pirate those NFL games. So <clears throat> there's that element of it. And with Jessica, I mean, not Jessica, Julia, this is, you know, one person who had very clear stated positions is in a political party with pretty much only one tentpole and it happens to deal directly with copyright and she went against both of those as part of her book deal here and that's a problem I have to say it's a huge problem for her and but I've got to say she's not alone in doing this especially early on when I was doing plagiarism today I was getting routinely attacked because one of the things I was doing very uh, emphatically was helping people learn how to properly use the DMC and enforce their own copyright I still do that but, um, of course, broaden them, doing a lot more now with the site. But back then, I would routinely get attacked by people saying, you're just a pro-copyright hack, you're an RAAA hack, you're this or that, all things that weren't true. But um, routinely got attacked for it. But when their work was infringed, they would write me, usually a direct email, and pretty meekly, um, asking for my help. And I always agreed to do it because it's the right thing to do. But... I'm just saying this isn't the first time I've seen this type of behavior and the reason is it's very very easy 
to be anti-copyright and anti-copyright holder and anti, you know, copyright enforcement when you're the one on the distribution and the con and consumption side, but the minute you're on the creation side, things look a little different. Things get a little more complicated, and that's the issue here. I don't necessarily believe that we should be, you know, hauling Shram out and dragging her through the streets as a hypocrite. But I think we should be starting to use this as an example of thinking about how these issues are more complicated than they seem. How you don't exist on just one side of the coin. How we're all both creators and consumers of content. And how sometimes we get caught, even good people, in conflicting positions. Now, could she have negotiated a better contract? Yes. Should she have for this? Yes. There's no doubt about that. Um, if she's someone that genuinely believes intellectual property is disgusting, if she is someone who believes that the publishers are part of the content mafia, she should have gone into those negotiations like she was walking into the lion's den and fight tooth and nail for everything she believes in, even making some very difficult sacrifices. But apparently she didn't. She received a very, very, very large advance on this book and seemingly signed away her copyrights without much in the way of restrictions and what they could do with it. And that makes her look bad, it makes the German Pirate Party look bad, and it, I think it sort of devalues the quality of the debate for everyone. But maybe it's an opportunity, like I said, to discuss the complexities of this. Maybe it's an opportunity to think about these things in a new light and to think about the duality of everything that's going on in the copyright debates online. Because at the end of the day, SRAM is not that unique. Everyone, and I include myself in this, is torn between being a consumer of content and a creator of it. And it's torn between the realities of what they want on both sides. And maybe hers is a little more of a flagrant, um, I, I guess I will say, a flagrant hypocrisy than most people. And most people I know try to at least you know reconcile the two in a fair way. But just because of her example, just because of what happened here seems so laughably you know dishonest and disingenuous, that doesn't mean not everyone's going through the exact same conflicts right now. She might have resolved the issue poorly, but I can guarantee you everybody who's online right now is dealing with the exact same thing. So just think about that. Think about it, and we'll talk more about it in the comments on Plagiarism Today and elsewhere. But until that time, this is Jonathan Bailey signing off.